So the global economy can't take any more chaos. And if you think we can dodge a recession, this is a wake-up call that tells us there's likely no soft landing coming. So Israel just declared war and they vowed mighty vengeance after Hamas unleashed a brutal attack on the country. And this attack literally took everyone by surprise. It's unprecedented. But you quickly realize that might be a very big geopolitical reason behind it. And if you didn't know by now, Hamas attacked Israel by air, land and sea. They launched literally thousands of missiles and paraglided onto Israeli soil. So this wasn't just an attack. It was an outright invasion. The economic threat we are facing today is huge and it goes beyond just money printing and additional war funding. And we know that war is highly inflationary. No matter if it's fought in Ukraine or in Israel, it destroys production and it destroys supply chains. Remember the Black Sea grain deal and the cutting off of Russian gas? Yes, that was a consequence of the Ukraine conflict. And it didn't happen immediately. It evolved over the following months. In our lead story today, stock sinks across the Middle East as Israel goes to war with Hamas. Israel's benchmark stock index drops the most since the 2020 lockdowns. But it isn't just Israel that got affected. The entire Middle East got rocked with indexes in Egypt, Saudi Arabia and Qatar all falling. Just look at this collapse. The entire gains of the Israeli stock market over the past 6 months just got annihilated in a single day. And that is the effect of a war if it affects your economy, your country. And it makes total sense. During a war, you have no idea which companies will get affected either financially or materially if the unthinkable happens. So investors are running away and they are pulling their money out. But if you think the economic effects are just isolated to Israel, you will be very wrong. Israel is in the Middle East, which is a region that's been plagued with instability for many decades. Now, what is in the Middle East that everyone needs to power their economies? You got it. Oil and gas. Oil. And now there's a bigger fear of this conflict spreading beyond Israel, spreading all the way towards a big regional power. We are of course talking about Iran. We already have the United States investigating Iran's involvement. We have no idea if they'll find a smoking gun. But if things go that far, nothing is off the table. Now, there's a rumor circulating about the real reason why Hamas started the attack. We don't know for sure, but it's still worth understanding. Almost immediately, when the attacks broke out, the price of oil rebounded. And this is bad news for the world. Oil source as Hamas attack on Israel fans Middle East tensions. Oil prices soared by 4% as a war risk premium returns to the oil producing region. Looking at the price of Brent and West Texas, we can see this immediate spike up. And this rebound is even bigger than any of the production cuts done by Russia or Saudi Arabia. And that's because the Middle East is literally the oil supplier of the world. And that's where the majority of OPEC countries are located. And no one has any idea how far this chaos was spread. There's a risk that the conflict could spiral into a more devastating proxy war embroiling the United States and Iran. In fact, any retaliation on Tehran could endanger the passage of vessels through the Strait of Hormuz. The Strait of Hormuz is a major shipping lane that is essentially a choke point that can block passage to any oil tankers in the region. It is an oil shipping lane, the lifeline for Saudi Arabia, Qatar, the UAE and Iran to get their energy shipments out to the world. And all these countries are incredibly big oil and gas producers. They are the biggest parts of OPEC. So even if oil production doesn't drop, if the Straits of Hormuz get shut down, this will still cause a supply shock in the Middle East. Iran has been having multiple showdowns with the US Navy in the Strait for quite a while. Tankers have been seized and a military buildup on both sides is happening. So this is just a powder keg waiting to explode even before the Israel attacks happen. Now the Strait of Hormuz is critical. You can't just divert your oil shipments to the Red Sea either. Just take a look at the oil infrastructure in Saudi Arabia for the perfect example. We can see that almost everything is concentrated on the eastern coast towards the Strait of Hormuz. The majority of refineries and ports are there. Even the western refineries in Jeddah and Yambu have pipelines connecting them towards the east. Oil and gas infrastructure are fixed assets. They aren't like Lego pieces that you can remove and deploy around. This is the real world. They take years and decades to build. So if the Strait of Hormuz gets shut down, the entire energy supply from OPEC will take a terrible hit. There will be supply disruptions and we'll have oil prices going up and inflation will rebound up. 
And by now, we know what that means for all the Western economies. Soaring prices across the board will force central banks to hike even further. Interest rates will stay higher for much longer. And why did Hamas attack Israel? Now, one real possibility is to derail America's Israel-Saudi normalization deal. And in a report by the New York Times, Biden's hopes for the Middle East are now in peril by the eruption of violence in Israel. Over the past few months, America was trying to mimic China's recent peace deal in the Gulf, and their version was to bring Israel and Saudi Arabia to the table to normalize relations. In fact, there were even rumors that MBS was even willing to throw the Biden administration a bone. According to the Wall Street Journal, Saudi Arabia was willing to raise oil output to help secure the Israel deal. Apparently, MBS was fine boosting oil production early next year if crude prices were too high. Now, that would be great for the global economy. I still believe we are enter a recession, but lower oil prices will make things more manageable. At the very least, the recovery will be faster. But we can literally kiss that possibility goodbye. Now that war has erupted in the Middle East, we can expect Saudi Arabia and the rest of OPEC to protect their oil revenues. In a stunning update, Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states reaffirmed their commitment to voluntary oil production adjustments. In other words, they won't be increasing production and in fact, might even cut production further. And if you're OPEC, if the Strait of Hormuz gets compromised, even if you increase production, getting the oil out is going to be a nightmare. What if the shipping lanes get closed? And what if your refineries get attacked? So you'd rather scale back on pumping oil and just let it sit in the ground. You lose nothing and oil prices could climb further. In fact, days before the attack, Saudi Arabia already affirmed their oil cuts would be maintained until the end of 2023. That 1 million barrel cut isn't going to magically disappear and now it seems even less likely MBS will reverse this decision. So we have to prepare for violent swings in the oil price in the oil markets, very possibly towards the upside. And if this escalates even further, if Iran gets dragged into a conflict, you're talking about a major oil producer in chaos. In the major news outlets, we are hearing that Iran is supporting the attack by Hamas, they are praising it, and this is really feeding speculation that they might be involved. Then you have Hamas saying support was given by Iran, so things could be much deeper than we think. And depending on how this plays out, Iran might actually derail America's plan for normalization. And this has big consequences because the economic war has reached an inflection point in the Middle East. And the big question everyone has is will the United States intervene? And if they do, how will they intervene? And this is where we must zoom out and talk about the bigger picture. Israel is a staunch ally of the United States. It is one of their biggest allies in the world outside of the NATO countries. And if we look at the recent moves in the Middle East, America has good reasons to be afraid. Their influence is really waning in the region. We have the BRICS expanding to include countries like Iran, the UAE, and Saudi Arabia. And all of these are Middle East giants that can swing the oil markets with just a snap of their fingers. Then you have China's Iran-Saudi peace deal. And that is increasing China's influence in the region, which could eventually lead to the US dollar being dumped in oil sales. And this is something that the US wants to avoid. And to do that, they need to maintain Israel as a strong ally. They can't afford it to fall or even be weakened. And guess what? America has now pledged to increase military aid to Israel. And this has incredible economic impacts. Remember, this is being done while a hot war in Ukraine is still being fought and that conflict is far from over. So it's not surprising that the United States is now setting a carrier strike group closer to Israel as well as supplying munitions to the country. And this is a big mobilization that could lead to further escalations. And it's not just the USS Gerald Ford aircraft carrier being mobilized. It is a whole team of destroyers and cruisers will be sent in as well. Now Lloyd Austin, the Secretary of Defense, is also pledging increased support. In addition, the United States government will be rapidly providing the Israeli Defense Forces with additional equipment and resources, including munitions. And I think we can see where this will bring the US economy towards. The final destination is even more deficit spending and the borrowing of money. But strategy-wise, America can't afford to abandon Israel because if they do, just think of the cascading effects, it will be magnitudes worse than the Afghanistan withdrawal. And if you think that was bad, this will be 10 times worse. You'll see the Gulf states immediately question America's defense commitment to the region 
and that will open up a power vacuum for China or even Russia to fail. And what's at stake here is the future of America's ambitions in the Middle East. And we can all remember what went down during the G20 summit. America and the EU announced an ambitious trade corridor project that links Europe, the Middle East and India together. The corridor cuts through the Middle East and if the Gulf is in turmoil or worse at war, then America's plan to rival the Belt Road has essentially collapsed. American interest in the Middle East is mission critical to them. Biden himself has pledged America to Israel's cause, saying, My administration's support for Israel's security is rock solid and unwavering. So it is important to look at this from an American perspective. And once you do, you kind of realize that America's intervention by sending support to Israel is inevitable. They have no choice. It's bound to happen because if they don't, their influence in the region will just evaporate. Then all kinds of nasty stuff can happen to America's economy back home. More de-dollarization will happen and the BRICS will only get stronger versus the G7. So defending Israel is existential for the United States. Now let's talk about the economic impacts because this is big. It's another flashpoint for this global economy which is already on the brink of collapse. Now inflation is still disgustingly high. Bond yields are still heading up. Businesses are going bankrupt and this situation is going from bad to worse. And let's focus on the US dollar first. The dollar index has been strengthening over the past three months. As we move towards a global recession, the world is starting to buy more dollars causing it to strengthen from under 100 points to over 106. Now this isn't good for the global economy because it causes everything to get much more expensive. For countries like Japan that imports a ton of commodities like oil and gas, this causes higher local inflation back home. Now that the Middle East is in chaos and Israel is at war, this opens up yet another can of worms and when instability happens, people run towards either gold or the US dollar as a safe haven. And until the dollar stops serving as the world reserve currency, this dynamic is going to play out again, again and again. And that's just how the system works. So if this conflict escalates, we are going to see a bigger rush to the dollar and cause the dollar index to spike further. And this will cause another global currency crisis. In a report by Reuters, the outbreak of military conflict in the Middle East may leave central bankers battling new inflationary trends as well as deal a blow to economic confidence. And this brings us to the inflation problem. This Middle East conflict is going to put extreme outward pressure on oil prices and there's a risk inflation might have a bigger resurgence. And this is extremely bad for central banks because they are already losing the inflation fight. We have the Federal Reserve pausing rates in September and the ECB themselves also hitting the pause button. They are facing a triple dilemma. According to ING Bank, the central planners are now facing a trilemma of slowing economies, the delayed impact of rate hikes, and hot inflation. And the last thing they need is surging oil prices. If we look at their scenarios for the oil price, we can see their base case is almost $100 a barrel well into 2024. But the Middle East is now in chaos and this is going to push us closer towards the high scenario of possibly $115 a barrel next year. And that is simply unthinkable. $115 is back to the early 2022 oil shock levels. And just remember how high inflation was back then. US inflation reached almost double digits in June last year. It was at 9.1%. And this is going to delay the Federal Reserve's fantasy of 2% inflation for much longer. We know Powell prays and hopes for inflation to drop down so he can ease off the brakes, right? But if Iran gets embroiled in this chaos, we could see inflation at over 3 to 4% well into 2024 or even 2025. We have to put pedal to the metal when it comes to interest rates, and that is going to spell doom for the US bond market, which is at breaking point. Now, everything in the global economy is controlled to a large degree by the US Treasury market, and if it implodes, we are going to see yields fly to the moon, which could break everything. The 5% bond market means pain is hitting everyone's way and the impact will be felt in everything from consumer spending all the way to companies' bottom lines. That's why we can't believe what Jerome Powell or Janet Yellen is saying. Their fantasy of soft landing is burning up in the atmosphere. It is burning away in Israel. They are at the wheel going 100 miles an hour towards an economic brick wall, but it can't stop because inflation is winning. Deutsche Bank tells us the obvious, saying, I struggle to see how the recent yield moves don't increase the risk of an accident somewhere in the financial system. The Federal Reserve can no longer push down yields by printing money to buy bonds. 
it will trigger a forever inflation crisis together with the supply nightmare happening today. And the only tool they have left is to jack up interest rates to send the benchmark rates higher to crush demand. But this is going to push yields higher, not just for treasury bonds, but for every single type of borrowing cost out there. Mortgages will go up, credit card rates will go up, and a big casualty will be global liquidity. Now take a look at the global bond yields. We can see the long end of the curve is rising fast. The US 10-year is heading towards 5% in record time, and the German bond has just hit 3%. Even Japan's 10-year yield is approaching 1% even though they are actively doing yield curve control. What we are seeing is a global meltdown in bond yields which is pushing everything to the breaking point. And if the war escalates, Janet Yellen has to ramp up bond issuance to finance America's defense spending for Israel. We have to factor that into the equation. And if we believe things can't get worse, we have a US senator calling for retaliation if things really escalate. And here's what Republican Senator Lindsey Graham said, an attack by Hezbollah and other Iranian proxies would be devastating to Israeli defense system. If such an attack occurs, Israel and the United States should go after the Iranian oil refineries and oil infrastructure, which is the lifeblood of the Iranian economy. And if this happens, if Iran's oil industry gets taken out, I can almost 100% guarantee we will have a historic oil crisis on our hands like never before. So we must prepare for more pain. We are living in an age of war. Inflation is here to stay and things will likely get worse before they get better. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Will the Israel war escalate and involve the entire Middle East? And how bad can this really get? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe. Be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.